Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to go over how to connect your Amazon Dash button to Apple HomeKit. So the first thing you're going to need is a Dash button and also an iPhone to pair the Dash button with. Okay so once you open the Amazon app click on the side menu button and then click on your account. Once this page loads scroll down to where it says Dash devices and click on set up a new device. Once that loads, click on Dash button. Once you're at this screen, make sure you have your Dash button ready and as well as your Wi-Fi passwords. And click Get Started. Once you click Get Started, it'll tell you what you need to do. So in my case, I need to turn on Bluetooth. So I turn on Bluetooth and it'll go to the next menu. So you want to press and hold the Dash button uh, for uh, six seconds so that it can connect. And then once you're ready to do that, click Connect. And so now it'll say preparing your dash button. And so I already had my Wi-Fi network pre-configured and I just click continue, but you might need to enter your Wi-Fi details. Okay, so once you see the uh, green check mark, uh, this is put the crucial part. Here it'll show you what you want to order. Instead of selecting anything, just click the X on the top right corner and then click exit setup. And so uh, that concludes the pairing of the Amazon dash button. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the software setup for the Amazon Dash and HomeKit integration. So you want to make sure uh, hap-node.js is perfectly fine. So the first thing you want to do is enter the accessories directory. So uh, if you followed my existing tutorials, it would just be cd hap-node.js uh, slash accessories and you'd enter the folder as you can see. And so the next command you want to run is sudo sudo wget geo.gl slash capital M U B lowercase P and then a capital T and a lowercase K. So you want to make sure the case is all correct. I've had a lot, a lot of people comment on videos who've had issues downloading the files, but they just didn't type the URL properly. So make sure you've downloaded the URL properly. Yep. So capital M U B and then a lowercase P capital T and a K. And once you hit enter, it completely downloads. So you can see it says it's saved. And uh, you can see uh, it's 208 bytes as its cutter, uh, current iteration. It's going to change depending on um, what issues come in the future. And you can see it's from GitHub, so that means it's mine. So if you cat mub ptk, you can see what the file contains. So anybody who is concerned with what the file has, you can see right there. And so the next command you want to run is sudo sh mub ptk. So make sure it's just like the link, it's the first two letters are capital and the T is capital, but the P and K are lowercase. And just hit enter. And so this starts the installation, so I'm going to skip through it. Okay, now that we see the installation complete message, we know that uh, hap-node.js has successfully installed the switch accessory and now that uh, the dash button can communicate. So, But now everybody's dash button is different so we need to configure their dash button individually. So the first thing we're going to do is run the command cd dot dot click enter. This takes us to the previous hap-node.js directory. So the folder we want to go to is inside node module. So the command we want to run is cd node modules slash node dash type in the word dash then dash button and this takes us to the folder we need to go to and click enter and so the next command you want to run is sudo node bin slash find button and click enter okay uh, so make sure you have your dash button ready and now that I've clicked enter this is gonna start monitoring the ARP requests on my network so as the message says try clicking your dash button and so I just clicked my dash button and um, since I've already done this before I know my dash buttons on the 4465 that uh, MAC address but uh, if uh, anybody else doesn't know you know it's it tends it's pretty straightforward uh, just use uh, keep clicking it multiple times see I clicked it again and you can see the 4465 address showed up that's my uh, uh, dash button I know that but if you keep clicking it, you'll figure out whenever you click it, there's a four second delay between when the address comes. So uh, yeah, once you figured that out, just do control C and copy down the address of your dash button. And so here, let me copy that down. Yeah, see, 
the three times I clicked the button three times and I have three addresses so now you can right click and just click copy and so or if you have if you need to write it down something like that whatever just try it to make sure you have it and so uh, make sure you don't change the case and so then you can run a oops cd dot dot go to the previous directory run it again cd dot dot and so now you're again at the main hap dash node.js directory and now you want to go to the accessories folder cd slash accessories click enter and then you want to run the command sudo nano switch accessory dot uh, dash accessory dot js sorry my bad and just click enter and this will bring you to the editing of the dash accessory file so there you can see the section start config end config and so the first line is where you want to copy it down with all the x's you want to replace all the x's with the mac address so in my case uh, i copied it and um, so here i just removed all the x's and just pasted it directly in there you go you can see that and so now for the accessory name uh, what you want to see the dash be called in a home kit so here, uh, the default file which downloads just says it's sample dash, but you can change it to anything you want. So in my case, since I have a tied button, I'm going to just call it tied dash. And then UUID name, you just want to make that something different than sample dash and have it be unique. And that's the end of that. So make sure you've done these three uh, configuration changes. And then to exit uh, nano, you can just do control X. Uh, y and hit enter and you're back and then if you go back to the previous directory run the command uh, yeah so make sure you're in the uh, hap dash node.js directory run the command sudo node bridged core.js uh, core because that's my only accessory on this setup and you can see parsing accessory dash accessory .js. there aren't any errors so that means it's fully functional now I'll show you what you can do on the iOS side of this configuration Okay, so now we're going to go over the configuration on the iOS side of this installation. So in my case, I'm on iOS 10, so I'll be using the home app to demonstrate how the switch can be used, the dash button can be used. But if you're not on iOS 10, you can use different apps and figure out how to automate as they're pretty well forward, straightforward. So now I'll be opening the home app. So now that I have the home app open, I'm going to go to the automation tab. And so here I'm going to create, uh, click create new automation. And so I want to select an accessories controlled. So I'm going to select, of course, my dash button. And so when uh, I click my dash button, uh, it'll, so when I the, click the dash button for the first time, it'll put, put on the turn on seat. And in my case, I'll select the light stand. So it'll turn on my light stand when I click it. And when I click it the other time, so this time I'm going to select off it turns off my light stand. So here I have the dash button. So when I click it on, you can see my light stand is turned on. And I'm going to click it again. It take, remember, it takes four seconds. And there you can see it turned off the light stand. So if you turn on the light stand, your switch is still on. So if you click the switch again, it's still going to stay on. But uh, if you click it, the switch again, and there you can see the dash button turned off the light. So yeah, you can mess around with the configuration. I know different apps give uh, different options. So that's on everybody's end. So yeah, be creative and share what you guys do.